Okay. So I know Kimberly's going to be gone tonight. I'm thinking about it. So you didn't take the package. Uh-oh. Julia here. Chloe's here. It's always nice when a plan comes together, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll give people a couple more minutes here. So are you taking <coughs> uh, Kimberly is not going to be here today. Uh, so oh, that's she, right. Yeah, that's right. She asked okay. me to uh, record the class. Oh, okay. So I usually record my computer screen, and it's close enough to where when I'm talking, it'll catch the majority of my voice, and I'll, I'll upload it to uh, YouTube. And, uh, and, and so then, we could view it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. What is the uh, site, website that I can download Excel? I have a library, is it LibreOffice? It kind of looks like this. You have LibreOffice, yeah. yeah. So I would like Excel, you can download it for free. Well, actually, you can use it for free if you have an MSN account. Yeah, and I'll show you that after class. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Pull your flash drive. Outstanding. So go ahead and insert your flash drive into your computer. And if you always try to put it in wrong first, so you can cut it out. Excel 2013 down to where it says Lex RD. Click and hold, drag it right down there. And then right down. Okay. And boom. You're done. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So easy enough. Ah, that's all. Yeah. I'm trying really hard not to do sugar. But thank you. I appreciate that. Everybody else in the class might want one. They certainly might. <laughs> Right. Okay, so we left off uh, uh, our last class uh, with what's up on the board. We have a pretty good uh, form uh, with which to, uh, um, you know, do some stuff with. Uh, if we wanted to, uh, we could use this form to print off 
and physically take role in a class uh, that we would then check mark uh, off, or we could use it electronically uh, by uh, just typing uh, either a little X or uh, some sort of a check mark or something like that. Uh, in the advanced class, we're going to be using a very similar uh, thing to this, uh, and we're going to be talking about how you can put an actual checkbox uh, in some place uh, and, and check it. So, uh, that's, uh, that, but that's kind of a little more advanced than what we want to talk about. Uh, so, uh, the next thing we want to talk about tonight's subjects are uh, creating and using uh, charts uh, in Excel uh, and managing workbooks. So, uh, one of the things with managing workbooks is uh, usually we have to have more than one sheet uh, in a workbook to call it a workbook. Uh, right now we have uh, one worksheet uh, and down at the bottom uh, left hand corner you'll notice uh, that it's called sheet one. Okay? So the first thing I would like to do is I would like to rename uh, this sheet one and, and I would like to call it attendance. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to put our mouse over where it says sheet one. We are going to right click uh, and select rename. Okay? Uh, and then we're just going to type in attendance, A-T-T-E-N-D-A-N-C-E, -T -T -E -E. okay? And then press the enter key, uh, and that will uh, uh, put that in there. The other thing that you can do uh, is you can double click on where it says sheet one, uh, and the majority of the time, uh, the little word will be highlighted, and then you can retype uh, what you want to do. So now we have another sheet, uh, or a sheet called attendance. Now we want to add uh, another sheet. Uh, we can do this in several different ways. Uh, one of the ways is down by where it now says attendance uh, is a little plus sign. Uh, you can click that plus sign and it will add a sheet. Uh, the other way that you can add a sheet to the workbook uh, is by going up to the home group or home tab uh, over on the right hand side in the cells group uh, there is an insert air, uh, button uh, that you can pull down and it will say uh, insert worksheet. Okay? Uh, if you pull this down, uh, you can say insert sheet uh, right here and it would insert the entire sheet. So uh, we can try it both ways. We can click the little button or little plus sign down there uh, and, and it does a sheet. I just want to point out uh, I'll, I'm, I'm doing this, you don't have to, we're only adding one sheet right this minute. If you do click insert sheet, uh, then it adds another sheet. I'm going to go ahead and delete that real quick because uh, I only want one sheet right now. So, uh, notice that now when uh, we added a new sheet, uh, that it calls it sheet one again. Okay, uh, that uh, the sheet one is back uh, because we renamed sheet one to something else uh, and so uh, Excel keeps a running tab uh, of how many sheets you have in your workbook uh, and it, if you don't name it, it calls it the first available number uh, that's there. If we were to add another sheet right now, it would be called sheet two. Okay? Uh, again, it's just a rolling number uh, as you go along. Uh, I normally uh, rename my worksheets right away uh, because I don't like uh, you know, having unnamed worksheets. Uh, so, uh, we are going to call the, this sheet a, a time, time right down at the bottom. Uh, so, we're, we're going to, I'm going to double click this time. Uh, notice that when I double click, uh, my little word becomes highlighted uh, and now I can, uh, can type in the word time uh, and, uh, and we have, so we have attendance uh, and we now have time, okay? Attendance and we now have time. So there are times when uh, we want to use information that's on one sheet on another sheet, right? Okay. Uh, we've, we've, as an example, I've got a list of students uh, on my first sheet, uh, and I want to uh, use that same uh, list of students on my second sheet, but as a teacher, I know that this list of students is going to change uh, as time goes on. Uh, so I won't. I don't want to have to always in the back of my mind go, oh well, 
I, I change the first sheet, so I have to change the second sheet. Uh, you know, Excel is all about automation, okay? Uh, so we are going to learn tonight, going back to that formulas and functions, uh, one of the things we're going to learn tonight is how do we use uh, information from another sheet uh, on the sheet that we are currently on, okay? So uh, the first thing I would like to do uh, is in, uh, make sure that we are in uh, cell A2 on the time worksheet. A2 on the time worksheet. And we are going to type an equals sign. Uh, again, an equals sign tells Excel uh, that we are now going to put some sort of a formula uh, in there. Okay, so uh, it's not going to take it as a label. Uh, it's going to take it as a cell. Okay, so we should be on the, we should be on the time worksheet. Oh, time. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And then cell A2. Okay, so now uh, with the equals sign uh, in cell A2, we are going to come down to the bottom of the sheet and we are going to click on the attendance worksheet and then click on A2 in the attendance worksheet. Now before we click any kind of enter buttons or anything like that, I want, to look, I want you to look up at your uh, formula bar, okay? So notice that it says equals attendance exclamation point A2 equals attendance exclamation point A2, okay? So what this means is, is it's a little code uh, that, that, that Excel uses. Uh, it, so it's saying that we're on the attendance worksheet and we know that because there's an exclamation point after the word attendance, okay? If there's an exclamation point, it means that it's somewhere else other than the worksheet that we're currently working on. If I were to take this information from another workbook, okay, because you can do that, okay, you can link workbooks together, the name of the workbook would be there, okay, followed by an exclamation point, then the sheet within that workbook would be there, followed by an exclamation point, and then the cell or range that you would be grabbing from uh, the other workbook, okay? So that's what this code means. And now uh, we can just uh, hit the enter button. And when you do, notice that it automatically takes you back to uh, your worksheet, okay? I don't know if that's where you were originally. That's okay. Uh, we're going to uh, cut that. And we're just going to copy it right over here. <clears throat> All right, so now we should have the word Bob uh, in uh, A2 on the time worksheet. Now we're going to use the fancy little uh, fill uh, button uh, on our uh, bottom right-hand corner of our cell. So you should, the active cell, we need to make Bob. Uh, so we're going to click on A2. So A2 will be our active cell, and we know it's an active cell because it's got the little green box around it, right? Uh, so we're going to go down to the bottom right-hand corner uh, of our active cell, uh, and we're going to make sure that our, our cursor changes to a black uh, a plus sign. We're going to click and drag to the right, okay? So when you do, you should now have Bob Davis uh, there. I'm sorry? Do we all have Bob Davis? Heard no, not me. Heard Bob no. moved. Heard Bob moved. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. Let's move Bob back. Bob needs to go back to where he belongs. So click on Bob. Okay. So right to see how that is. Now mm -hmm. click and hold. And no, yeah, right there. Now move, move it back. No, click and hold. Now move it back. There we go. Now move down to the corner. Now click and hold. And move this one. Okay. 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 Now, while, while both of those cells are selected, because 
we have a range, right? We have uh, A1 or A2 and B2 selected right now, right? How can we tell that? Because there's a green box around them, okay? So we know that those are selected. So now we want to grab the little quick fill thing that we just did with both of them selected and pull it down to eight. Okay. Oh, oh you gotta have both of them selected. Cool. So Bob Davis. Oh, there you go. You come down the corner. Put the hole. Go down to eight. Uh huh. Okay. Now, I, why did I go to eight? Okay. Well, I couldn't remember where I was on the other sheet. Sometimes it's better to go a little bit farther and correct ourselves uh, than by going back and forth. Okay. So we are now going to clear cells A8 and cells B8. So select cells A8 and B8. Just select them and go to cell B8 or A8 and B8. Okay, uh, because only one was selected. And then go up to the clear command in the edited group of the home tab and clear those two cells by clearing all. Clear all. That's okay. This will erase your right there. Okay. Yeah, just go up there, clear, and then clear all. Okay. Now I just wanna, I just wanna go through uh, each one of the little cells. Like when I highlighted a B7 uh, over on my timesheet, uh, notice that up in my formula bar, I have the attendance. Hi. Hello. How are you? I noticed that if I select uh, cell B7, uh, my my formula is is in B7. Okay. Okay. Now let's real quick. We're going to fill in some time, so let's put a couple of headers up here. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead with uh, first name and then last name. Uh, and then put uh, a total time. So first name, last name. Last name. No, 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 no. Next cell. Okay, so backspace part. And oh. I go over to D2. Now is where you're going to put last name. So use your arrow key to go over right one, the arrow key, and then put in total time. And then use your little arrow key to check boxes. See how the cursor is still in there? Okay. 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 Now I'd like everybody to select columns A, B, and C, okay, and we select them by going up to where the A, B, and C, or the A is, clicking and moving our cursor to the left, okay? So we come up here to where the A is, click and select all three columns. There we go, okay? Now let's go up to the um, cells group on our home tab in the format item. Hold down the little arrow and hit the auto column width. Auto fit column width. Okay. 
come up here, format, auto fit column width. Okay, and now that, that makes the columns the right size uh, for what we have uh, in the columns right now, right? Okay. Okay, so let's put in some hours uh, for these people. Let's, let's, uh, let's put in for Bob, uh, let's put in uh, 24 uh, and then enter. Uh, your name should be next, so let's put in 40 for that person. Uh, Sue Burns, uh, let's put in 32 for her. And uh, 30 for Gary Drake. Uh, 30 for Donald Way. And uh, 32 for uh, Frederick Jones. Okay. So 24, 40, 32, 30, 30, 32. Is that what we got? Okay. Now there's a couple of different ways that we can make a simple chart. A simple chart is, is probably one of the easiest things that we can do. Uh, what we want to do is uh, we're going to highlight uh, the information that we want to use for our chart. Uh, and, uh, and then we're going to press the F11 key. Okay, So uh, what I'd like everybody to do uh, is uh, highlight uh, from A1 down to C7, okay, and then press the F11 key. So just from uh, A1, A1, down to C7. There we go. And press the F11 key. F11. simple data, okay? You can do it for more complex data, but the more complex the data, the more chance you have of not getting the right kind of chart uh, for what you want to do, okay? Uh, so again, that's a very simple chart. Notice that uh, when we pressed the F11 key, uh, that created a new worksheet for us called chart one, okay? So now we have three sheets uh, in our workbook. We have attendance, we have time, and we have chart one, okay? Now, I don't like where chart number one's chart sheet is. I would prefer it to be at the end of the workbook, okay? So that we have attendance, we have time, and then we have the chart, okay? So there's two different ways that you can move worksheets. One of them is to click and drag uh, the worksheet where you want it to be, which is, I consider to be the simplest way. Uh, but there's also another way that you can do that by right-clicking on the title of the chart one, where chart one is, uh, and then you can move or copy uh, right there, right under rename, uh, you can move and copy. And when you uh, do this, uh, a little box pops up, says move or copy, uh, and you'll notice that uh, it says, okay, where do you want to move this to? Uh, and uh, it, you know, you can move it before sheet one, or before attendance, uh, before chart, uh, before time, uh, or you can move to the end, which is what I'm, what I'm going to do. The other thing you can do is you can check the little box down there uh, to create a copy. This is very handy when you need multiple of, of the same kind of chart. 
Uh, my point uh, is that one time I was making an expense report chart, a expense report uh, book, uh, worksheet, and it was the first time I was making it, and I needed the same kind of form 12 times, you know, one for every month of the year, uh, you know, if it was a fiscal year from July to July. Uh, so I made my July copy, and then I just started doing this, create a copy uh, for 12 times. And then I just renamed them July, you know, August, September, October, November, you know, they were the same sheet, just different months of the year. Uh, and I could go in every month, uh, and I could fill out my expense report, and I could copy it or uh, print it uh, and turn it in. I have a permanent copy uh, of what my expense report is, heaven forbid that some accountant somewhere lose it. That never happens, does it? <laughs> uh, so uh, I have my co permanent copy, uh, and uh, and they have theirs, and uh, and you know that's an easy way uh, to to use something that you create one of, and you're going to use it multiple times. Uh, so in this particular case, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just click Move to End, uh, and then click OK. And now you'll notice that when we do, uh, that now the attendance is first, a uh, time is second, uh, and chart a uh, one is third. Now I could go in and I could rename my chart if I wanted to. I'm not really particularly hip on you know changing my chart name right now. Uh, because more than likely we're going to delete it and start over. I haven't made that decision yet. Uh, but before we do, uh, I wanted to point out some uh, different things here uh, that we can do. One is, I want you to notice that when we're on the chart sheet, uh, that up in the uh, toolbar, uh, or up in the ribbon, excuse me, uh, there's two new tabs up there, okay? Uh, there's a uh, under, there's actually a new little group called Chart Tools, uh, and under there you'll see a Design tab uh, and a Format tab. Now I would like you to just bear with me here. I'd like you to click on the Time Worksheet, okay? When you do, uh, the Chart Tools uh, go away, okay? Uh, this is a a feature in Excel 2013 and 2016 uh, that they give you these little extra menus only when you need them. Okay, so when we're working with pictures, there's going to be a little pictures a uh, tool up there. When we're working with charts, there's going to be a little chart tool up there. When we work with tables, there's going to be a little table tool up there. Uh, there's all these little things that Excel uh, allows you to do but only when you need to do them, okay? Uh, what this allows us to do is it allows us to focus on the task at hand, okay? Uh, so, uh, so just, no, you have to, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'll jump back to sheet one here. Okay. Uh, so, uh, first off, let's, uh, let's uh, right click here. And then we need to get the other So now let's everybody click on our chart one again. And when we do, our chart tools come back up again, okay? Again, you're only needing that particular tool function uh, when we're doing charts, okay? Uh, so 
Now, uh, let's. Uh, When we're working in Mac, this is different. So it de work in Mac at work and it depends. What what version of Mac Office do you have? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, if you have the new Mac version of Office of 2016, then it will be very very similar. If you do not, if you're still working back in 2011, then no, it's going to be extremely different. Okay. That was one of the reasons I was really happy when Mac or when Microsoft published uh, Mac Office 2016 because the similarities between Mac Office 2016 and Office 2016 are amazingly the same. So uh, I was really happy when they published that for Mac users so Mac users can come take this class and pretty much have the same kind of knowledge that they would be using working on their Macs. Okay. Um, it's, it, uh, my, my suggestion is to upgrade because it's not that expensive. I want to say it's like uh, 99 for the entire suite uh, upgrading on Mac Office 2016. Um, it's a whole new look. Uh, just like this, you have the ribbon, you have uh, all of the, the functions, except for uh, instead, of, uh, instead of file, you have a little menu bar, an Apple menu bar at the top. So a little bit, little bit different, but not a whole lot. Um, trying to figure out why my why my chart doesn't want to do what I want it to do. Because when we press F11, it's supposed to. supposed to let me do stuff. Is everybody's dead? Well, I mean, uh, are all of your stuff on your toolbars gray? you being nice to me today. Hold on a minute. I'm going to try something here. Wow. How unusual. Well, I'm a little bit stumped here as to why mine doesn't want to work today. Okay, so let me try something different here. Mine's down too. Is anybody else in there besides yours and mine? 
No, because, well, theirs are. Yours is working, though. Yours is working, right? No, mine's no yours mine's isn't. Tools I'm going to figure out something here. Hold on for just one Should second. I'm gonna... here no? no, not yet. Let me, uh, let me uh, figure out what's going on here first. Because right now my charts are are not on. And I'm not sure I know why. No, I don't think so. I'm I'm able to move around okay. But it won't let me do anything with charting at all. Try it on um, one of the computers over here that's working. Yeah, one sec. Let me uh Let me look at one more thing here. One sec here. Okay, one sec. I'm going to try something different here. Nope, that didn't fix it. Yours is not, and yours is not. 
Yours is. Yeah, the time one is working. The, the time one is working. The short one is working. Well, format works, delete works, insert, all these clear. Yeah, they work, but it doesn't, doesn't allow us to do anything with our chart. Sorry guys, I don't mean to take up time here, but if I don't, it's kind of bad when the teacher's one doesn't want to work. Okay, I'm just curious. That didn't work.
Wow, did somebody really do that? Uh, I think they were getting a file menu, both of it. Go to file menu. Uh, go to options. Uh, go to advanced. Okay, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. show all. And just push OK? Yeah, and push OK. So then you got a, a plus and a, a funnel and a paintbrush. Okay, we're all working now. I am so sorry, folks. I really, really am. Let me uh, let me get back to where I want to be here, real quick. Uh, hopefully when I do this, yes, it works. Woo! So I just want to make sure that we all look the same here. Uh, we should have uh, attendance time chart one, right? Uh, and then when you... There we go. Okay, good. We're all caught up. Can you caught up? What's up? Go wrong again? Oh, wait. It went back to the... Okay, so you cut it up. Cancel. Cancel. Okay. Select the chart itself. There we go. Okay. Now go to design. Now you're back on. Okay, sorry. I'm so sorry. That's all right. That's what I found too. Is that when yeah. I clicked inside there, I switched it yeah. on. Okay. Uh, ours, uh, uh, somebody had gone into the options and changed their options. Mm -hmm. Why it wasn't working properly. Uh, so now I want to talk about a couple of things. One is the chart itself is known as an object. Okay. 
Uh, and and there's, there's, it's an important distinction to make. There's data uh, where you have either a value or a label. Okay, we've talked about that. Now we need to talk about objects. Okay, so objects are outside of data. They're a representation of some sort of data. It could be a picture. It could be a chart like what we're seeing here. Uh, it could be a, 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 a table is considered an object, even though a table contains data. Okay? Uh, and you'll notice that it's a table because there are going to be uh, handles around the object. Okay? So if an object is selected, you will notice that there are a total of nine handles around that object, and they're represented by little circles, okay? Those are considered handles. If you look up at the screen, I'll show you what I'm talking about when I say the word handle, okay? Uh, you can come up to any one of the little handles, and you'll notice that when you do, the mouse changes, as an example, if I'm on a corner, it changes to a diagonal arrow, okay? If I'm in the center, it changes to a back and forth white arrow. And if I'm on the bottom, it changes to an up and down white arrow. Okay, if I'm on a, one of the corners, the reason why it's a black arrow is it's going to change both the horizontal and the vertical at the same time. Don't do this yet, but let me show you what I'm talking about if you look up the screen. So when I, oops, I'm sorry, I clicked the wrong button. Uh, I'm going to click and hold the left button, and now I'm going to, I really am going to, why aren't you doing this for me? Oh, I know why. Uh, I apologize. I'm on my own screen. So I want to be on this so I can change the size of the inside of the chart here uh, if I'm on the corner. If I'm on the center, it'll just change it up and down. And if on the side, it'll change it left and right. See how that works? Okay, so that's uh, an object changing the size by using the handles. Okay, this is an object. Another way that we can tell it's an object is normally with objects, there's some sort of a menu that goes along with them. So in this particular case, we have our chart tools menu. Uh, and on, it has two of them. There's a design menu and there's a format menu. The design menu tells you about the look of something. Okay, so in this particular case, we have uh, a, a line of chart styles. And if you click on any one of them, you know, just start clicking on different ones, you'll notice that your chart changes, you know, look. Uh, the look of your uh, chart changes. Uh, if you went over to uh, the left of that, you can change the colors uh, of your chart. Uh, and uh, you can uh, play around with that for a second. If we wanted to, we could uh, change it to uh, different colors uh, schemes. Uh, you know, the, the, the blues or the yellows or, uh, you know, we could change it to uh, all different kinds of stuff, okay? Uh, we could change up in the upper right-hand side. You'll notice where it says change chart type. Uh, if I wanted to, I can bring that up. Now I could change it as an example, maybe instead of a column chart like what we have right now, uh, we could change it to a line chart or a pie chart uh, or a bar chart or uh, any other kind of uh, chart that you would want to. Uh, let's click on bar chart for just a minute uh, and uh, click OK. So now uh, we have something that looks like this. Uh, you know, we have a bar chart. Um, you know, and, and again, it's one of these where uh, really uh, you want to choose a chart type that gives you the best representation of the data uh, that you're trying to represent. In this case, we're trying to represent the number of hours uh, that people have worked. Uh, and, and either this bar chart is a good uh, choice, or 
uh, the column chart that we were on uh, the first time is a good choice. A line chart really wouldn't give us a good representation of the data, right? Uh, because a line chart, what's that? I said, I'm still looking for the bar chart. Change chart, right? Go to bar on the left hand side. Okay. And then just click OK. Three. No problem. Okay. The line chart. Okay, a line chart is normally used to display data over a given period of time. Okay? Uh, so like uh, stocks in a day is a good use for a line chart. Uh, uh, sales of uh, over time uh, is a good use of a line chart. Uh, it, it shows the changing uh, movement of things over a period of time. Uh, it's not really good for the data that we're using right here uh, because ours is a static time. We're taking a snapshot uh, of the amount of time somebody has used and we're displaying it uh, as a snapshot uh, in time versus over a period of time. Now, if we had the hours per week uh, of people, and we had several weeks worth of data, maybe a line chart might be okay for one or two people, uh, or a group line chart might be uh, appropriate, but we don't. In this particular case, we're just looking uh, at a snapshot in time. So really, we're going to want either a bar chart uh, or a column chart. Okay, so uh, let's go back to our column chart uh, by coming up to a change chart type again and going to column and then just clicking OK. So here's our here's our people. Okay. Uh, there's uh, some options uh, that we want to talk about uh, in our advanced class. We're going to go in and we're going to talk about uh, how do you add uh, labels to our chart? Uh, how do we go in and format the chart? Uh, we're going to do some really advanced stuff in, in charting. Uh, here in the basics class, uh, we really only want to talk right now about how do we create a chart, okay? And how do we, uh, how do we move it around? Uh, what can we do uh, with this chart? Uh, so now, a lot of times, people want uh, their chart and their data uh, to be really close to one another, okay? So uh, you're looking at the data, you want to see the chart. So uh, let's go back now to the time sheet, okay? Uh, right here, okay, we should have the same data uh, selected, right? Go back to your timesheet, down at the bottom, you know, instead of on your chart, you should be on time, uh, and we should have the same data, A1 through C7 selected, right? Go up to your insert tab, okay? Okay, go to the charts group, okay, and I want you to click on recommended charts. Okay, now notice it gives us a couple of recommendations. Uh, we're going to take the clustered column chart and we're just going to click OK. Okay, now notice now, oh, we're going to go to recommended charts. notice now your chart is right on the worksheet where, where you're at, okay? Okay, so now if I want to change the size of my chart, I come up to my little handle, okay? I can click and hold on my upper left hand corner and I can change the size of my chart. So click it and move it up to where the uh, D1 is. Move the corner of your chart to D1. Okay. Now you've got a bigger chart okay, on your 
on your worksheet. Okay? We have a bigger chart. Okay, so now I go up to change color and I would like you all to make it the second orange there. So I want to make it orange down under monochromatic. Okay. And then in the chart styles, okay, uh, notice that over on the left or right hand side of the chart styles bar is at two arrows and then an arrow with a line uh, there. Do you see the arrow with the line? Click on the arrow with a line. Right, right in the where the. Okay, so now notice that uh, when you do that, more styles come up. choose the one that has the orange background and the, the, the lines. Orange background and the lines. Okay, why did I like that one? Uh, let's choose this blue. Well, we did change color. You can choose this orange one. Why did I choose that one? Because it's Halloween. Yeah, I, <laughs> I wanted to point out what I'm trying to prove here is is really it's personal preference okay um, and, and that's one of the things we learn as we start using Excel more and more and more uh, for things like charting and color schemes and so on and so on and so on the, the, the two people you have to please are yourself and whoever's looking at your charts okay uh, if it's just you, then cho choose colors that make you happy and, and that is pleasing to your eye. If you're choosing colors based on your boss's preference, then understand what his or her preferences would be. Okay? Do they like simple charts that have a white background uh, and a colored column? Uh, do like, they like some sort of a high contrast colors? Is there a company color scheme? Uh, that you have to be concerned about using, okay? Uh, all these things come into play uh, when we start making charts for other people uh, and things that they're going to look at uh, versus just what you're going to look at. Uh, when, when I'm making charts for myself, uh, I keep them very, very simple uh, because I, like to, I, I don't like to be distracted, okay? Uh, so when I was teaching my people who were making charts for me, uh, I ask them to keep them very simple. Uh, mostly it would be like a line outline. Uh, there wouldn't be a lot of color on it. Uh, uh, you know, I'd have a minimal amount of words uh, cluttering up my chart. Uh, if, if I used data labels, which are what the little numbers are on the bar, if I used them at all, okay, uh, I, would, uh, I would keep them very small, okay, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't use a table underneath my chart because that's what charts are for, is to display data. Why well, look at the table underneath the chart? Uh, so again, it's one of those things where I keep things very simple on charts for me. That doesn't mean that other people don't like really complex charts. Talk to anybody in margin, okay? Uh, and, and they'll give you these fantastic charts that tell you 10 billion things on the same chart. Uh, and it takes you about two hours to understand it. Okay? Um, so I like to keep my charts very simple uh, and very straightforward. I uh, notice I only have one piece of information on these charts. I have a total amount of time. Okay? Uh, I don't have a whole bunch of information, uh, just total amount of time. Now I would like to uh, do another uh, little chart here. Uh, and so what we're going to do for right now uh, we are going to come down to, uh, we're going to move down on our sheet uh, to cell A20. A20. 
if you're if it's you if it's okay yeah make your chart a little bit smaller grab the handle down at the bottom and make it a little bit smaller uh, let's go to a20 okay and uh, I want to type in uh, let's see um, let's go with a month in a20 uh, and then uh, uh, let's go uh, below A20 and A21. Let's do Jan, okay, and then do Feb, okay, and then select Jan and Feb. I want to show you something really cool. Uh, Excel has built-in lists uh, for us, okay, so uh, I would like you to fast fill. Again, that's using that little box that's in the right bottom right-hand corner of, of the cell. I would like you to fill down to where it's going to say December, right? Uh, so we grab that little handle and we slowly move down. You'll notice that when you do, it tells you which month you're on. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay, did you select January and February 1st? Isn't that cool? Yeah. Did it do it for you? Good. Okay, so, uh, nope, uh, type month right there. Yeah, yeah, I had it there. That's okay. Okay, so that one, Jan. 